In this episode, we enjoy a no-win day before deciding to stay in Tahanea for our first Maramu, struggling with where to anchor and a dead fresh water pump while loving the time of rest, exploration, and snorkeling with incredible sea life. Today we are leaving this beautiful southeast anchorage here in Tahanea for the North Pass. We've got two beautiful days of sunshine and low winds, so we want to get back to the passes and enjoy them. So we are on our way and then we think tomorrow night we're going to head off to Fakarava. We've got a really big blow coming in that's going to last about a week, 10 days, and we want to get to a protected anchorage. So we'll keep you posted on that. But for now, we say goodbye to the, probably the only anchorage in the two motos where you don't have to use chain floats. And this next anchorage is going to be full of bombies. Anchor down. incredible it is totally calm no wind it's actually pretty hot yeah it's gonna be a bit of a mess on our boats they're all stuck together but we don't have any wind tonight so we should be fine but tomorrow we will have to go down and untangle those they say on days like this that is the common thing that happens. Isn't that stunning? Very excited we're headed into the pass for the first time. This is the East Pass. Tahanea is very unique in that there are three passes to enter and leave the atoll and they are very close to each other. The North, Main, and East Pass. The majority of sailors enter and leave the atoll through the Main Pass because it is the widest and the deepest. But some sailors leave through the North Pass as it is a shorter distance to head west, but it can have standing waves since it is more shallow. But this pass is really fun to dive because there is a greater chance to see mantas, sharks, and other pelagics. The East Pass, the one we are going to snorkel now, is the narrowest and shallowest, and while navigable, is rarely chosen for entry or departure. It is the favorite to dive though, as the corals are in great shape and they're shallow enough to swim down to. We jumped into the pass about two hours after slack tide, so we enjoyed flying in a two knot current. It is so much fun to fly over the corals with no effort. Most of the coral was in great shape, unbroken and full of color, but the effect of the El Nino year was still evident in some bleaching due to the warmer water temperatures. Much of the coral has recovered and looks great and hopefully in time and with cooler water, these last few patches will be restored. But the best part about the whole snorkel was the beautiful fish life. The fish are not afraid, so we were able to get up close and appreciate both their beauty and their behavior. Off again. We've made the decision to stay in Tahanea for the big blow. We think this is the best choice. There are only three people at the Anchorage Great Southeast coverage. It was a crapshoot going up to Faka with so many boats in the Anchorage, it doesn't make any sense. Back to the beautiful Anchorage we left a couple of days ago. Anyway, here we go. These are the days you don't hear about in sailing where it's cold and rainy and yucky. Wow. All right, we are anchored down back in pretty much the same spot that we were when we left two days ago. We wanted to be over there next to the big island, but it was really full of bombies and several boats beat us there. So we really didn't have the choice. East is straight behind this island. So we're hoping that island takes a lot of the wind out. Of course, the wave action will be totally taken care of because of the reef. So we're going to reevaluate tomorrow once the wind shifts to east and see how it is. And if we need to move, we'll move. But wow, it's a beautiful morning and we are 
going to take a drive this morning in our dinghy. We're gonna head over to where those boats are there. The reason is I am not feeling great about this spot. I don't feel like there's a huge amount of coverage and that makes me nervous with, you know, 35, 40 knot winds coming in. We've got two huge gaps for wind to come through. And if the wind shifts to northeast, then we've got a massive gap to come through. We've got five or six more boats coming into the atoll today, this morning actually, to get a spot that is going to be safe like us. And so we want to make sure we get over there before anyone else. So it's lit a fire underneath us this morning. All right, good news. We found a spot and we're going to move over there right now before the other boats come in and uh, then we'll be set. Now we've just got to navigate over there safely, especially with the sun in our faces. So Brown's going slowly. We've got tracks for this. Follow tracks, right? This is going to be a much more protected spot because it's got a bigger island. The wind will be blocked behind the bigger island, which is really good. It's so hard to tell the depth of these bombs. We have put a ball with a weight so we can see where we need to go. We're two days away from the Maramu arrival and it is filling up in here. Lots of boats have come in this morning five or six a lot of people in the water checking their anchors floating their anchors getting ready Ooh, we got a big storm system coming in First day of the increased or fortified trade winds that is called Maramu. Uh, you can see how calm it is, but you can hear the wind. We're in a fantastic place to anchor, the closest to the island. With all sand underneath us, you can see the bridle and the chain. We're almost fully extended. We've got a secondary bridle on just in case. So the winds are not that strong right now, probably in the low 20s. Very fortunate for the Maramu that we are in such a great place. A Maramu is a Tahitian word that means southeast wind, and it basically is fortified trade winds. This is the normal direction of the trade winds, but they are just not as strong typically. They average between 15 and 20 knots max, and we're looking at upwards of 35 knots with gusts. It can last from a few days to a few weeks, and we are forecasted right now for about 10 days. But, you know, the forecast isn't super accurate outside of five days, so we're just going to keep updating it and see what happens. But right now, we're in a great place, and people are taking advantage of being out and about because tomorrow's going to be a lot rougher probably double the wind speed than today.
are going to head in to do a circumnavigation of the island. Today might be the final day before it gets a little too crazy with the wind, we'll see. But today's a great day to be taking a hike around the island, so that's what we're gonna do. And here we are on the main island of the Southeast Tahanea Anchorage. Not sure what the name of it is. I don't even know if it has a name. From this beach where it's ultimately the most protected, we don't feel any wind at all. It's like a no wind day. I'm sure it's gonna be different on the other side. Look at the beautiful coral right here. It's just a big old swimming pool out there. It's all about going and just checking stuff out you've never seen before, far off remote places. It is just beautiful. It's a beautiful end to our first day of the stronger Maramu winds. Tomorrow it's supposed to be a lot stronger, so we're taking advantage of what we can do while we can do it. We're really hoping we can continue at least to snorkel each day, even if it's fairly close to the boat. There's a lot of cool. Day two of Maramu is off to a great start. Look at this. Woo! Mm -hmm. A breakfast puff pastry that Brown made. Oh, France! French pastry! Wow, yum. We're getting a lot of squalls in today. Some bigger winds this afternoon, although it was really pretty still most of the day. But you can see the wind out there on the water. I'm hoping Brown is somewhere nearby. He went out for a snorkel. It is just way too cold for me to be out on the water right now. So after three and a half years, our fresh water pump has died. It's 5.30 in the evening, so not ideal. Especially when we have no water in our water bottles. But the great news is Brown prepared in advance by having one of these fresh water pumps on board. We bought that when we were in St. Martin four years ago. Oh man. Just for a time like this. Take one wire out and put one of the new wires in. So it's more foolproof. This is what happens when you have a lot of projects going on all at once. I've been working on the water maker. Oh man. And now, a fresh water pump never goes out at a good time. <laughs> After three hours last night, we got the water pump working. Oh, that's the best sound ever. Oh, that's the best sight ever. We got the leak to stop in the accumulator. And one of the reasons, well, the only reason why the leak stopped is because of this incredible kit that Brown bought, O-rings of 32 different sizes. That was what needed to be changed in the accumulator and the leaking stopped immediately. It was crazy if you've got a leak in your plumbing check your o-rings first that would have saved us a few hours one of these at the right time is worth like a thousand bucks so uh, easily do not use vaseline on these these are silicon and vaseline is petroleum petroleum and silicon do not mix well together so we were too tired after last night to film anything we just went straight to bed, but uh, we fixed it. I'm to clean up this boat. It is a mess. It's been a little over a week now, and the first boat in the Anchorage is actually departing today. It's a little bit windy still. We are not gonna go. We're gonna spend a few more days here. It's really the first time, I think, in our time on the boat where we've been in a position where we really couldn't move and there was no planning. You just had to sit through this, which is so relaxing. Especially, so, especially if you're behind some good protection. There's nothing to worry about. Anyway, the time is running down and it'll be interesting to see how many other boats leave. So far, that is really only the first one. <laughs> 